Hey YouTube, it's another quick one here, uh, another power supply. This is a Commodore 64 Vic 20 power supply, original power supply. And these are notorious for failing. And <clears throat> what they do is they fail and they take out a lot of the chips on the Commodore 64. And the reason for that is that the 5 volt regulator, which you can see down here, is basically just sunk in a load of epoxy. And over time, it overheats it dies, it fails short and it doesn't do 5 volts anymore it passes 9 volts into the 5 volt line so how this works is you've got your mains coming in here the mains goes to a 9 volts AC transformer <clears throat> the AC transformer then passes the um, 9 volts AC up these two cables here into this board this board then rectifies the 9 volts AC with these weedy diodes which are N001 diodes, I'm going to upgrade them um, into this capacitor so basically the 9 volts AC comes through these diodes then it becomes pulsed 9 volts DC that pulsed 9 volts DC goes into this big capacitor 4700 I put a new one on there, that was the old one uh, so the 9 volts sits in the uh, capacitor and then it comes out of the capacitor and is used to feed the 7805 regulator here and this wasn't a, well it was a bad design but the idea, you can see what they've done, they've, they've basically put a big heat sink around it but then what they've done is they've filled the heat sink up with epoxy on both sides so even the back so the only heat sink really is the top little bit poking out so that's why they fail I mean this one was still working but it was putting out too much on the 5 volts so I thought well I might as well just um, redo it and I've been watching a couple of YouTube videos and I watched one old link where he got one of these without a base and he's made a whole new board for it um, but he said there are other ways and the other ways are to basically use this existing board and instead of using the 5 volt regulator here just pass it off to a switch mode power supply so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a fuse on the 5 volt rail here because there is no fuse on the 5 volt rail on these there is a fuse on the 9 volt rail but that doesn't help because it's a 5 volt rail that goes wrong so we're going to put a, a, a 2 amp fuse on the 5 volt rail um, and a, a buck converter instead of the 7805 and then seal it all up now these are quite easy to get open it does involve breaking a bit of plastic you have to get a knife or, or a screwdriver in and under and then pop that one, pop that one, pop that one and then work your way round and then you've got two clips that go in here and here here and you have to pop those as well one at a time and then eventually it'll pop off um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out with a hand drill these columns so that I can put a screw through back in to hold it because obviously it's not safe not having a bottom on it or a bottom that can fall off when all of this is exposed I mean you wouldn't get away with this now I mean the weedy wire that might be a fuse I don't know um, that's the fuse that might be like that thin for a reason if it gets hot maybe it's supposed to melt I don't know but there's your 9 volt fuse um, but all these terminals are exposed so if it didn't have a base on it obviously it's a death trap so <clears throat> what we're going to do is do that, I've already changed the cap, I'm going to do the diodes, I've marked the diode polarity on the board, so I'm just going to do that quickly, I won't bore you with that, and then we'll get the regulator out and wire that up. Okay, so I'm going to shout a bit here to get over the hum of the fan on this uh, dummy load, this is our test setup. This is the board I'm using, or going to use, this is a um, variable voltage regulator, it's all over Amazon, eBay, about £2 shipped. Um, so I just tested it out, I don't mistrust it but I'm just testing it out it claims to take input up to 35 volts and do anything from I don't know 2 to 30 or something so it's got a little trim pot there, I've set that to 5 and a bit volts um, I've actually set it to 5.1 volts with no load on it and I've got it <coughs> input up to a power supply, a bench power supply I'm going to give it a range of input voltages and we're going to see, we're going to put a 1 amp load on it at 5 volts and see how it copes. These are great. I got this off of um, eBay for about a tenner. It took a while to arrive, but 
basically you can plug in a voltage and a load and it will hold that load uh, and it's, it's yeah it will hold that load so I can test this regulator under that load and see how it holds up so let's start off at 9.6 volts apply the load that's what you'd expect it's falling a little bit but it's regulating it quite well that difference is just you know down to not being 100% accurate with my non-fluke meter uh, so um, that's at 9.6 let's take it up because I don't know what that's really going to do that AC transformer let's take it up to 13 and a half seems to be doing okay 5.06 5.07 take the load off 5.11 so it's not lying. Let's take the voltage up. That's a relay kicking in. Take it up to okay, let's take it up to twenty. Claims thirty-five, so let's take it up to twenty. Five point oh eight. Five point oh eight. One amp load. Take the load off. Five point one one. So a little two pound board looks like it's doing alright claims to do up to two amps uh, three with cooling but I'm only using it on a unloaded up C64 so one amp's plenty for me um, we'll just do it quickly with one and a half and see how it gets on ok so I've increased the, the amps to 1.5 lowered the volts back down to 9 5.12 unloaded let's put the load on it no difference is coping. So let's crank up the voltage to about 15. I don't want to screw around too much here, let's just get on with it. That's under load at 1.5 amps. That's without the load, no difference at all. Let's crank up the voltage. Give it some. Okay, that's with no load, that's with a load. So this board looks pretty good. Next thing, I'm going to check out the ripple on the scope. Okay, so here's the scope. This is an old ham egg scope, 20 megahertz scope. I've got it set as high as it'll go. It's times 10 probe, so that's 50 millivolts per division. And as you can see, it's not one division. So it's probably 20 to 30 millivolts. And we're reading. 5.05 this is under load if I take the load off the scope you'll see that disappears because there's no load so you always need to measure it under load so there's the load coming up and that's 50 millivolts for division and one thing I've noticed the little trim pot seems to drift uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on that but as long as I can lock down the trim pot I'm happy with that that's at 13 volts just one quick thing this power supply is isolated from the mains um, so it's not mains earth reference with a scope and neither is this it's only got a little two um, light and neutral no earth so yeah happy with that let's see how we get on so now I just stuffed up the uh, adjuster pot with a bit of plasti dip I'm going to soak test it now for an hour at one amp let's make sure that it is what it says it is. Okay, so that's the end of the soak test, and at one amp we've gone from 5.07 volts to 5.14 volts under load. Don't know why that is, but it's still well within what we need to be. So let's take the load off, and it's gone up to 5.19. That's getting quite near toppy. Um, I don't know, this seems to be drifting. I might revisit this with another board. I'm going to put this on with a Ray Carlson power saver, that's for sure. But yeah, it just goes to show it's worth testing these things. Give me really weird answers now, so I'm definitely not using this board. So, I guess there's a reason why that's only two dollars or pounds or whatever. And the reason is it's about shit. Because it's not actually holding the same voltage over time. I mean, that's getting up to 
to being quite a lot different to what we started out with. And also, it's random. Okay, so that ring light sucked. It kept creeping up, no better than the original, really. Um, these are excellent. I use them on drones. A lot smaller. Let's see how these stand up. One hour soak test. No load. 5.11. Load. 5.09. One hour. Come back in an hour. Okay, so that little regulator has been rock solid. It hasn't moved between 5.09 and 5.1. That's at one amp, so I'm just going to up it to one and a half and do that for a little while and see how that goes. And that's the scope trace on the little regulator. Um, <coughs> and that's uh, 50 millivolts per division. 50 millivolts per division looks good. Uh, that's tens of millivolts per division at one amp. So happy with that. Put a little heat sink on it, some thermal gap filler. Bung up the uh, trim pot there, and that's done. Leaves plenty of room for a saver. Okay, so I've had a bit of a rework of this. Um, capacitor stays. This one's coming off because it doesn't actually do anything. Because what I'm now doing is I've just powered it off the capacitor, the regulator, and then straight out to the line there. That's a fuse, and the reason it looks so rubbish. Because it was a fuse carrier off an old Sky TV board with a twenty, a two amp, twenty mil fuse in there, so it does work. But <clears throat> yeah, um, just going to stick the regulator to the side there, and that's it. So I just drilled out the old uh, plastic from these posts and the base as well. I may do these. I don't know yet. They're in the actual thing, and they might break off. They're a bit skinny. So there we are, there's the old brick refurbished. Got the Carlson saver sitting there next to it just in case as I've been messing around. It's all working, it's showing 4.99 volts at the computer when it's switched on, which is fine. And there we go. So thanks for watching. It's got a fuse on the 5 volt line and the 9 volt line, and uh, should be good for a few more years. Cheers, see you later.